Welcome to our Good News program. Aren't you excited over these lessons? Today we're going to talk about you. We have one question today. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Are you ready? Have you been born again? Let's see what God's Word says in the church of Smyrna. He says, He that overcometh shall not be hurt in the second death. You see, once you are born again, the Spirit of God that dwells within you, He never leaves you nor forsakes you. And you do not have to live a disobedient life. All you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Now we have greater is He that is in you, and this is the Holy Spirit, than he that is in the world. You must be born again because if you're not born again, you do not have the Spirit of God dwelling in you. You cannot go to be with the Lord apart from the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God, the whole life of Christ, was in the power of the Holy Spirit. The whole life of a believer must be in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. The Holy Spirit is love, joy, and peace. That's our inward life. That's what I receive when I receive Christ. He is the only one that can give peace. He's the only one that can give us victory over sin. He's the only one that can give us joy. We cannot love apart from the Spirit of God dwelling in us. And you cannot worship Christ apart from the Spirit of God because you worship in spirit and in truth. So you must do what God's Word says. You must believe that He died for you because we are learning the, what faith means. So for by grace, are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God not of works lest any man should boast so how are you saved by grace through faith God's marvelous grace something we don't deserve but he never sinned so we know that we can call upon him and he will save us and this is what you must do today. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means that the blood of Christ cleanses me from all sin. For by his own blood, Christ entered in once into the holy place. So it is in Christ we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin. There can be no other way for you to know you're ready to meet your Lord. So we know that he's alive. We know what he says. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? He has already died for me. That's why I can't understand how anybody could not accept this gift of eternal life. This is, I, it just, it is absolutely amazing to think that anyone could reject him. 
For God so loved you, put your name there, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, this is the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. You may be going to a church that's a dead church, like we've seen, and you can still let your light shine for Christ because only Christ knows true believers. We don't know anyone's heart, but by your fruit, people will know the, how you live if you're glorifying God. So here's a Bible verse now. If you're a child of God, and if you know that this is true, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. We're in him and he is in us. What more could anyone ask? This is what his word teaches. And this is the greatest gift in the world. And there is not a person in the whole world that has died for you, is gone back to heaven. He's back in heaven. He's, he's gone back to heaven. He's there preparing a place for us. There's not a religion in the world. There's not another person in the world. There's not a church in the world that has done this. Christ is the answer. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, help every person out there today that's listening to receive Thee as personal Savior, that each person may have this gift of eternal life and forgiveness of sin and have victory over death and victory over sin. We praise Thee for these truths. And we thank Thee for saving us. We thank Thee for sending Thy Son to die on the cross for our sins, and that we are washed from our sins in His own blood. Thank Thee today for saving every person that's listening, because it's not Thy will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And this is the confidence I have. If I ask anything according to Thy will, I know thou dost hear, and I shall have the petitions I require of thee. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers today. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Aren't these the most exciting things? Isn't this wonderful that we can know these truths, and we can know that Christ is in control of our whole lives? And now we come to the Church of Philadelphia. This is the Church of Love, and our theme always is Ephesians 2.7 that in the ages to come, for us as believers now, that he might show the exceeding riches of his glory in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. This is one of the richest and deepest statements in the Bible. What does this mean? This means from the moment I'm saved, he is continuing to show me his love and kindness. And this will go through the millennial age, the eternal state begins, and this is eternity to eternity. We're going to see greater things about Christ than any other thing in the world. That's all we need is Him, that we can see His glory and that we can behold His glory. So the Philadelphia church, this is a church of the true church. The believing church, the brotherly love. Now he says, he that is holy and he that is true. You see, what's, this is what we're to do. We're to have the mind of Christ. We are to be holy as he is holy. And this is what he commands us. And whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. This is what he wants people to see in these last days in which we're living true believers that have no fear of the evil all around us, that can trust Christ. If it's our time to go, we go through the gates of glory and we never go to a place called hell. There is no in-between, no in-between. There's only two places in the Bible that's an eternal hell that is the blackness of darkness forever and fire and brimstone. He says, if your name's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. 
Now that's what's going to happen to the false church. This is what's going to happen to the false church. And this is serious. And you may not have another chance to accept Christ. This is why we know this is the richest statement that there is, that we will know His glory throughout eternity. And you're going to be in a place with all of those evil and corrupt people that are doing these evil and corrupt things. Now that's where you're going to be. Now this is serious and this is time for you to make this decision to follow Christ because that's going to be the abode of all that reject Christ. And you don't want to be in that place, but you're going to be with these evil people. This is the saddest thing about people that reject Christ. So here we have the church of Philadelphia, and he says, He that hath the key of David. And remember, he's going to reign as king on the throne of David. This is what, why he comes through the lineage of Abraham. That's why he's a Jew. That's why Satan is attacking believers and the Jews today because of Christ. You see, that's what, what it is. It's all about light and darkness. It's all about lies and truth. And all of these evil people are the liars and they are the ones that are in darkness. This is why you must know what God's Word says. And then he says that he has opened, that he has a door open and no man can shut it. I know thy works. Behold, I've set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Now listen what he says, because you have a little strength. Thou hast kept my word and not denied my name. Twice he said this about denying his name. You know, people are ashamed to say they're Christians. Young kids that's in school are ashamed to tell their friends that they're Christians. They're ashamed to say, I won't do that because I'm a child of God. If you deny him, He's going to deny you before your father, and you're going to miss out on all the blessings that he has for you. And then he says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. You see, if you're not a child of God, you're a child of the devil. This is, this is God's word. Which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. God knows if you're a Christian or not. I will make them to come and worship before my feet. Every person is going to bow down before Christ. If you reject him here on this earth, you're still going to stand before him. Every person is going to stand around the great white throne of judgment, not for believers, but for unbelievers. Behold, he says, now thou hast kept the word of my patience. Now this is where we're kept from the seven year tribulation period. He said, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. He also says the first thing in 1 Thessalonians 1.10. And one of the things that you must understand that we are to be waiting for his coming and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which has delivered us from the wrath to come. You see, today we live in an age of grace. We're living, we're going to have the covenants after we're finished with these lessons and we are going to, we are living in under the Davidic covenant, the dispensation of grace. In the book of Revelation, during the seven year period, this is the wrath of God. This is the wrath of God on those that have rejected him. And then he says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast, hold fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. You see, Satan is an enemy. He is a destroyer. He wants to take your joy. He wants to corrupt your mind to cause you to have fear. Now, if you know the word of God, you're not going to have fear. And he says, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him my name. You see, that's why Satan imitates everything that Christ does. So that's why you see the number 666, 
His name is going to be in our forehead, and Satan has got the evil number, the 666. See, there is a difference. The number 666 is a satanic person, and we're going to get to the awful mystery of iniquity maybe this next week. We won't get into it this week. So here we see the church of Philadelphia. What does he say? He that is holy, he that is true. That's what we're to be. Christ is our example. And the survey of the spiritual standings of the assemblies. You see, we are an assembly of people, not forsaken the assembling of your church to get of yourselves together. You see, the churches are the body of believers, the true church. And this is the only church. Before the Lord, it is refreshing to find a church which is faithful to Christ and to his word. Oh, isn't it exciting to be faithful to the word of God? And this is, he says, the continual testimony of a church was divinely ordained by Christ. This is ordained of Christ, that we have a continual testimony. And then, keeping the door open against all opposition. All the opposition of Satan. See, Satan tries to destroy the church, even through true believers, to keep you from going to church and being faithful. And this is what he says, and the church's faithfulness and is the only church that Christ is in, the faithful church. And then the assurance of an open door, this is the true church. And then he that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And Revelation 3.10, this is, listen at what he says. He's going to, to all the world, and now remember this has to be to all the world, this is, he's, this is not just a few people. This is what he says to all the world. And then he says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. This is what he's teaching us in these lessons. This is Christ's promise to the faithful light bearers. Are you a light bearer? Are you the light of the world? Or can anyone not see Christ because of your sinful life, your lustful life? your disobedience to Christ. And this is all the way to the rapture. We are to be faithful. This is, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. And this is exactly the way of God's faithfulness and his promise to those who faithfully keep the word of his patience. Now, are you keeping the word? Behold, I come quickly. Hold that which is fast. Now, we're just going to talk just a few minutes about this church because this is the church that we're t we, we, we have to ask ourselves, are we doing what is commanded of us as a true New Testament church? And there's only, the only th way we can do this is to listen to what God's Word says. So, if we are giving out God's Word, we must know and teach the doctrines that three, the doctrine of the assurance of salvation, the doctrine of the eternality of God, that he is eternal, and God's abiding presence. Now, if you have a church that is evangelistic, that is teaching Christ, this is the growth of evangelism is essential to the well-being of a person. There was joy in the church in Jerusalem. This is and must be a true Bible-believing church. The church at Antioch was built on evangelism. Is your church evangelistic? The evangelistic church is what must be the New Testament church today. They began in Jerusalem and spread the word of God. This is evangelistic in spirit, not in the fleshly efforts and activities. 
I'm, my church must be guided and directed by the Spirit of God. Pastors are to do two things. Give out the Word of God and pray. The deacons are to be full of faith, full of power, and full of the Holy Spirit. And they are to help in the ministry of getting out the Word of God. And we as believers are to do the service of the Lord in obedience. You cannot grow in the Lord without telling others. If you cannot tell others about Christ, you will always remain a baby Christian in the work of the Lord. How many of you are giving out the Word of God? Now, I know there are so many of you that have given out these New Testaments, and we're out of them. We're having more printed up. But those that are giving out these are really evangelistic. And I'm going to write all the names down of all these people that have given these out. And if you want to be evangelistic, you write to our box number and we will send you these. But we're waiting on more to be printed because we've already given out 20-some thousand. 2,600 have gone to New York. And we need more, but we're waiting on the printer. So if you have a desire to serve the Lord, you can write for these, but you'll have to wait and pray for the printers. Our job in our churches is not singing, not playing, not organizing. It is to tell the world about Christ. Our Ichabod could be written over our church. That means the Spirit of God has departed. Now we must get back to Spirit and in truth according to the word. And we must get back to righteousness because the spirit can't work if we're living like the devil. What is righteousness? What do you think righteousness is? If we, God has declared us righteous, those of us that have been saved by the blood, righteousness is perfecting holiness and the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now these churches are teaching us today how we are living in the days of the Laodicean church because we are not seeing the New Testament church today. And we must get back to that right now and to the holiness that God commands us to have. Growth of the evangelism is essential to the well-being of a person's life. Divine wisdom is needed. Obedience to God is the growth and light as well as love. These are necessary for the growth of a church. Obedience, living by faith, and being light bearers and loving those around us. Proverbs 4.18, but the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Light comes to Christians gradually as he is able to bear it. So I always ask these three things. Is my ministry a joy? Am I bearing fruit? Am I glorifying the Lord? These are vitally important for us as true believers. We must worship first. Then our walk must be pleasing to God to walk as He walked, to be holy as He is holy. And then our work. So we can see is your church a Philadelphian church? Or what is our church like? This is one of the things that only God can answer because he is the one that is giving these out. He is the one that is teaching us. So now we're in the Laodicean church. This is Revelation 3, 14 through 22. And this is the will of the people. You see, in the book of Judges, every man did that which was right 
in his own eyes. You're going to be judged by the word of God. Are you living it? This is what God's word says. It is sig noticeably significant that in each of these letters, our Lord addresses himself in a particular need of their spiritual condition of the assemblies. So the last church, he addresses himself as the amen. That means so be it. Confirming every word that he has spoken on the final and alterable authority, the amen is the eternal, so be it. These things saith he, the amen, the, he's the faithful and true witness. Are you a faithful and true witness? We're to be like Christ, the beginning of the creation of God. He finds nothing to approve in their self-satisfaction and the accumulated wealth of the assembly. Our Lord immediately reveals his utter disappointment and nausea at the half-hearted, lukewarm attitude regarding vitality and life. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. You see, this is a, a church of apostasy. They're thinking nothing. He has nothing to approve in their self-satisfaction and their accumulated wealth. Now you see, our Lord immediately reveals his utter disappointment with these people. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. The boast was in self-sufficiency. They were absorbed in their material riches. They were blind to the real spiritual condition and their spiritual poverty and knew it not. This is what is happening with the churches today and believers. They were absolutely oblivious to the fact that with all their temporal riches, in the sight of the one who was rich and became poor, that we might become rich. They were wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Not destitute of clothes, but destitute of the abundant riches of His grace. Is, does this sound like you or your church today? That's why we started out today with salvation. You must know Christ as Savior. Once you know Christ as Savior, you will not fear all the things that are happening because God's Word says in Luke that men's hearts are failing for fear for the things coming upon the earth. Then we'll go and get some more. You bring more.